Look at that. Look at that. Is oh my gosh. Oh my god. Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Stable Diffusion. If you saw my last video, I spoke about how Google Colab has changed their terms and how now they're using a computing unit to measure how much use you can have of Google Colab and that kind of, you know, messes things up for some of us, even the ones that pay. I don't know how much it has affected you, but it's definitely made me want to go out and I bought a brand new GPU. So from what I understand, you can't just use any GPU. I had to buy an NVIDIA GPU. I got the RTX 3080 and it seems to be working fine with that. So I, you know, that works for me. Unless they create a version where it just runs smoothly with other GPUs, then uh, I would recommend getting a NVIDIA GPU. If you have one, then definitely try this. I actually want to show you some stuff I worked on since I've installed it locally. And uh, here's one of them. This is more re my more recent one. Each image on itself looks great. I mean, this is as close as we're going to get uh, at the moment uh, to something that's like an animation. I was also able to create this one right here. I mean, this looks amazing. And I'll explain why I prefer running Stable Diffusion locally now, uh, because to me, it's just giving me some amazing results. So let's get into it. All right, so I will not make a uh, tutorial on how to install it locally because there's already some videos about it. So I don't want to repeat uh, the information that these people have already put out because, you know, they put a lot of work into this and a lot of it is stuff that they set up themselves and then, you know, they set it up for people like me and you who want to get into this. So uh, I will definitely want to recommend you to AI Entrepreneur. This guy really gives you a breakdown of how to install this. Uh, you would want to go to his newest versions of because this is changing. So you want to go to the newest versions of how to install it locally onto your computer. Uh, and I also recommend uh, Nerdy Rodent because this person also um, has a lot of cool settings that I was able to uh, implement into my videos. So once you follow the tutorial I recommended and you have Stable Diffusion installed, you wanna go ahead and open it. So once you open Stable Diffusion, you wanna go image to image, and this is where you make videos. Uh, this is where you could make a video. If you saw my Epsynth video, you're gonna do something similar here, where you're gonna have to export the individual frames from the video. You can do it many ways, uh, whatever software you're using to edit, and uh, export, you have to uh, make sure that you export it as uh, PNG or JPEG. I do a JPEG, so if you want to just be safe, because this works for me, I just use JPEG. So whatever section you want to use, export it as uh, individual frames. And when you export it, you want to make sure you export it with the number zero so that it numbers all your frames like this. So when you put zero, it will export it as zero, 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 one, and so forth. So. Yeah, so you export all the frames, put it in a folder, and inside this folder, you have all your frames right here, right? And so let's just get one frame. Let's drag it onto Stable Diffusion right here. You have your frame right here. Yeah, so make sure uh, you get the, the width and height that you need. I believe this is 960 by 960. Uh, whatever you do, just make sure it's the right width and height in pixels. And then, so you put your prompt in here. The cool thing about this also is that you can interrogate. And when you press interrogate, it's going to give you a prompt based on the information that it sees here, which is kind of crazy. So it's going to show, it's going to say something to the effect of women standing in a room with a window behind her or something like that. Watch. So let's let it load. Okay. Here it is. Woman holding a laptop computer in her hands in a room with window and blue light by Sailor Moon. Ah, that's weird. Um, yeah, uh, there's no laptop. So let's take away the laptop. And she's not holding a computer. Uh, let's just say, let's take all this. A woman in a room. Ah, let's leave Sailor Moon. Let's see what happens. If you run it as is, you might not get the best results. Let's just try it. Let's see what we get. So yeah, as you can see, this is not the results you probably want. Uh, I will show you little tricks that you can do to make sure this looks better. 
Um, first of all, the two settings you want to pay attention to is uh, CFG scale and denoising strength. So the lower you get on denoising strength, the closer it'll look like the actual video. I believe that when you put this, the FCG scale higher, it tries to lean more towards what the prompt says. So it's about finding the balance between both of them. So I'll put the FCG up and I'll put the denoising down. So let's generate that. All right, so look at this. This looks way better. This image alone looks great. Now, will this look good once it's animating? Will it do good in every frame? We don't know that. So what we have to test out is other, we have to test out other frames to see the consistency of this. So let's close this and add another frame. A little bit, that's a little different. Let's try this. It looks okay, but it's it's not keeping the style uh, the way the other style. I also wanted to mention that uh, AI Entrepreneur also gives some great tutorials on how to download styles. So there's this thing where you can create styles to train the AI. So like if you want to make your art look more like Disco Diffusion, you can switch the style and it will follow that. So I apply the settings, come here, generate. Actually, that looks pretty cool. I mean, it looks kind of creepy. It reminds me of like the covers of Goosebumps, if you guys remember that. Uh, I don't know if, um, if you guys even know what that is. But yeah, so that's the kind of styles that you can add. Uh, I have, I like using this uh, Mid Journey style because I like the way Mid Journey looks. If you're not familiar with Mid Journey, it's an AI generator as, uh, as well that runs through Discord. Um, but uh, yeah, you can mess around with these. Let's try cartoon style, young, blonde woman. Let's also, and here's also something that's gonna help you out a lot. Here uh, in the negative prompts is things that you don't want. So I don't want like blotches of like, that make everything look a little bit uh, more muddy. I also wanna remove the blurriness and wanna remove the saturation. I wanna remove the details and let's try that definitely looks more cartoony but uh not what i want so another thing you have to pay attention to is the seed as it is negative one means that it's random so if you don't get results that you want you can run it a couple times and then figure out what the seed is right here and then uh, copy it down here so you can get a more consistent style that you like. So I'm getting crappy results. So let me actually put an artist name, Rakowski, and let's see if it gives me something better. Okay, that, that looks pretty cool. So now that I add an artist name and a style, it actually gave me some really good results. If you go to here, down here, and you press restore faces, and let's run it again. Uh, it cleaned it up slightly. So now that I zoomed in a little closer, look at the face, man. Oh my gosh, look at that. That looks amazing. Like, this is what's so incredible about Stable Diffusion, that you get amazing images like this. So let me test out different frames. Okay, okay. Yeah, this looks really cool. So what I did is, since I like this style, I copied the seed from here and I pasted it down here. And so now I get the a consistent style throughout the video. So once I have a style that I think looks pretty consistent, what I do now, I go to batch image to image. I go to make sure I go to the folder where I have all my frames. I copy the location, put it in input directory. And in that same place, create another folder and just name it something, just name it the same and then underscore out so that it's easy to follow. So you copy, you paste it, press out. Since you created that folder, everything that's gonna be generating will go into that folder. So let's run this. Nice, look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Uh, some of these look kind of funky because obviously it's not gonna be perfect. Look at that. Look at that is, I mean, as individual images, it, it looks amazing. 
once it's done, you come into the folder where all the AI files are at. You press on the first one, make sure that importer JPEG sequence is on or PNG sequence is on right here in sequence options, press import, bam, there it is. Bring it in. Doesn't come out the same size as the video for some reason. So I have to extend this, uh, just make it longer. Uh, sometimes I just do it like this faster. I just press alt and then drag. Uh, I might actually make have to be more precise. So it's one, 125, I believe. All right, let's see what this looks like. All right. The thing about AI right now is uh, I haven't seen anyone do something that looks like super smooth as if someone animated this hand drawn. You get a lot of like flickering, um, a lot of inconsistency in the style. You see, but like the individual images look amazing. Look at this getting so close, getting so close to getting those smooth animations. And then at that point, man, I feel, I, I feel for those that animate because this is going to be difficult to compete against. But hey, I mean, if you have a unique art style and you have a unique animation style, then there's always job security, just like anything. If you're very skilled at something, you can't, uh, you can only do so much with AI because it's, if you want something very, very distinct, if you want something that's very much like, that's very specific, the, the AI can't do everything. It can only do certain things, but it, but it can do some very impressive things that can potentially affect uh, people who do animation. So if I had a video where someone's not moving, I can use uh, Epsynth and I have made a tutorial on that. I can get several of these images or like get one of the images and run it through Epsynth and it'll look pretty smooth, but since she is moving so much, it's probably won't work so well with Epsynth. I'll mess with Epsynth and Stable Diffusion in my next video and see what I can come up with. Just tilting the head, all these. This is like incredible. Yeah, it's very impressive. Uh, I'm sure if I tweak the settings a bit, maybe I can improve this, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it like as is. Yeah, hopefully this was helpful. If definitely check out those tutorials. When you're running this on your local computer, it's free. I mean, the only thing you have to pay for is the GPU. And honestly, if, if you plan on paying for Google Colab for several months with the way they're doing things now, at that point, just it's just buy a GPU, uh, invest that money so that you can create some cool stuff like this. Um, yeah, so that's it for today. I, I will, uh, at the end of this video, I will show you what, what I was intending to do with this clip, which is have her like opening a window uh, and then showing the AI after that and then closing it. So here it is. And thank you for watching. Take care. God bless. Hey everyone, this is me from the future. One of these animations is not the one that I worked on during this video. I actually discovered some settings that I really liked afterwards, but all the information that I shared here is still useful and can get you started to get some amazing results. Uh, but you can expect the next video very soon. So thank you for your time. Thanks for subscribing. Peace.